program is rated PG. The following program deals with mature subject matter and contains scenes of sexuality. Viewer discretion is advised. Let me, Mom. Thank you, McGill. Mama, it's for your own good. I don't want to talk about it, Luis. But you can save money on the mortgage every month, money you can use for your retirement fund. I already told you, I will not take your father's name off the deed. It's the only way that you can refinance the mortgage. Have your husband declared dead or divorce him. No. Why in the world would you sacrifice your own security for a man who abandoned you and this family? Or is dead? He didn't abandon us. Papa would never do that. He loved us. I know he's alive. I know it in my heart. You can light all the candles you want, Mama. He's not coming home. Yes, he will. Stop it, Louise. Can't you see you're upsetting Mama? I'm sorry, Mama. I don't want to hurt you. I just want what's best for you. I know, Louise. I know you mean well. But your father, he was a good man. And I don't like to hear you speak ill of him. I still remember the last day I saw him. He left for work at Crane Industries in the morning. He kissed me goodbye. He told me he loved me and I never saw him again. No one did. He didn't even report to work. Luis, didn't you try to find him when you became a cop? Yeah. I questioned workers at Crane Industries. I even questioned some executives. No one knew anything. The Cranes destroy anyone they come in contact with. I won't let them hurt anyone else in this family. I talked to Cook, and she'll make you something to eat if you're hungry. Your father and I ate at the fundraiser. I'm not hungry. And you're avoiding my question, Mother. Question? What question? When Father was on the phone earlier with Sam Bennett, the new police chief, you seemed to be very interested. Why? <laughs> Why in the world do you think I would be interested in, in the new police chief? What, what did you say his name was? Sam Bennett. Huh. You were listening very closely to Father's conversation on the phone with him. No, I was thinking about all the reporters descending on Harmony because of Sheridan. You know, your father and grandfather become apoplectic over bad press. It's not good for the family image. It was uh, fortunate that Gwen was in Paris when Sheridan had her accident. How are things between the two of you? Good. She's a lovely girl. When can we expect an engagement? That reminds me, do you have Pilar's address? <laughs> of course I do. Why? I promised Pilar that I'd let her know if there's any news about Sheridan. I'm gonna drive over there. I need some air. Oh. Tell her I said hello. Is everything all right, Mother? You seem tense. No. I'm just tired. Good night, darling. Good night, Mother. Is mom okay? Well, I don't know. She's not in her room. I mean, she should be sound asleep because Eve gave her a sleeping pill. Then where is she? Well, she's got to be around here somewhere. Look, don't worry. You go in the front of the house and take a look. I'm going to look down here in the backyard, all right?
Everyone says that you're not real. So why can I see you? I told you. I have something important to tell you, Grace. But first, I have to take care of an uninvited guest. out at night. understand any of this. Grace, are you out there? Sam? Be ready. There's not much time left. Who are you? Grace! I shouldn't be so critical of the Cranes, Louise. They've been very nice to me. You've earned every measly cent they've paid you. Mrs. Crane is very generous. I consider her a friend. I have news, Mama. She only considers you a servant. That's not true. You don't even know her. I know the Cranes, and they've caused nothing but disaster for this family. The sooner we cut all ties with them, the better. And the fastest way we can do that is for you to divorce your husband so we can refinance the house and you can save money every month. I don't want to discuss it. Mama, you have to face reality. Papa is not coming back. Don't say that. Louise, enough. You're upsetting Mama. She has to make a decision on this. She doesn't have to make it tonight. Mama? Please. Louise, you've got to get over this fixation with the Cranes. Not after what they did. Uh, there's no proof they had anything to do with Papa disappearing. I don't care. That family has caused nothing but trouble for this family. The sooner we're rid of them, the happier I'll be. So Teresa better get any fixation about her and Ethan Crane getting together out of her head. Listening to this old song for? No reason. Turn it off. I need to go over some papers with Ethan. Where is he? He went out for a drive. A drive? I mean, he knows these Hodgkiss contracts have to be finished this week. He better start getting his priorities straight. <laughs> and what priorities would those be, Julian? Well, first and foremost, the family's business interests. I think his first priority should be his own happiness. Well, then he must be the happiest young man in the world because he's been given everything he wants. <laughs> oh, yes, he has all the material things in life. What he doesn't have is the love of his father or his grandfather. That's ridiculous. Of course I love him. He's my son. He's my firstborn. I've done everything to ensure his future and the future of this family. 
Don't you put the needs of this family above Ethan's needs. Don't you make him a pawn like you and Alistair made me. What has gotten into you tonight, Ivy? <laughs> Why? Because I'm not acting like the Ivy we agreed I would be years ago. Don't worry, Julian, I won't go back on our agreement. But don't you break your promises to me, either. Or you and your father will have me to deal with. Grace? What's going on, Dad? Is Mom okay? I don't know. Grace? Where is she? Where's who? The little girl. She was just here. Honey, there's no little girl out here. Now, come on, let's get inside. No. No, she has to be here. Little girl. Little girl. That little brat sent a swarm of bees after me. Ow! Little girl, where are you? The brats disappeared again. Good. Grace and her family are all alone. I can get at them now. And believe me, Timmy, I'll show them no mercy. Luis upset you, Mama. He just gets carried away sometimes. He, he didn't mean anything. Yeah. He was just saying what he thought was best for our family. It's the way he says it. He just can be so hard sometimes. He's made a lot of sacrifices for this family. Sacrifices you don't even know about. So if sometimes his words seem a little harsh, remember, his heart is good. I know, Mama. And I feel guilty I don't always do my share. No, oh, you're a good girl, Teresa. You are. Luis thinks I waste my time dreaming about things that can never come true. Oh, but you should dream. You should have plenty of dreams. You're young. There'll be time enough for you to realize that the world, well, it's not exactly like the one you read about in those magazines. Still, I do have one dream that can come true. I dream that one day Ethan Crane will come to our door. <laughs> Ethan Crane, come here. Why would he do that? I don't know, but in my dream he does, and it will change my life and our entire family. Hey, I'm going to the store to get Mama some ice cream. You want to come? Nah, I don't think I'd be good company. I know what's got you into this mood. It's that run in you had with Ethan Crane on the beach this morning. You're right. Seeing Crane got me thinking about Mom slaving away as their housekeeper and the day Dad disappeared when he went to go to work for them. You know, it's weird how our families have nothing in common, but we always seem to cross paths. And it always seems to end up in disaster for our family. One day I'll get us away from them for good. What are you doing here? I live here. You related to Pilar? I'm her son. Why are you here? To hassle my mother because she didn't pick up your socks? No, I happen to like your mother very much. It's just unfortunate her son's such a jerk. She has to be here. Grace, calm down. There is no little girl. No, I saw her. Eve gave you a sleeping pill. You were dreaming. You were sleepwalking. I saw her. You imagined it. Well, then I must be going crazy because I saw the little girl in the swing. Oh, we don't have a swing. I saw it, hanging from that tree. I'll check it out, all right? If there was a swing, there should be marks on a branch. I know there was a swing. I'm not going crazy. No. Erica, no. Luis, no. Mama's inside. You don't want to upset her anymore. You need to tell Pilar something. You can tell it to me. Fine. 
Tell her I haven't heard any news about Sheridan. I'll know more tomorrow. Okay, beat it. <laughs> Ethan Crane, coming here. Oh, sweetie. Teresa, that's more than a dream. That's a fantasy. I know. Could you imagine a crane coming to this neighborhood? Mama, I got a message for you. There won't be any news on Sheridan Crane till tomorrow. How do you know about Sheridan? Ethan told him, just now. Ethan Crane was here? At her house? <laughs> I'm not going to listen to this. I have work to do. I meant what I said, Julian. Don't go back on your promises to me, or... Don't threaten me, Ivy. <sighs> oh, it's not a threat, Julian. I mean it this time. Oh, yes. Yes. I do mean it. Julian, and I warn you, I'm watching you. I checked out the tree limb, but there are no marks or signs of a swing having ever hung there. Are you sure? I'm positive. I saw it. I did. Is mom gonna be okay? Yes, honey. What your mom needs is a good night's sleep. All right, Grace? Yeah, that's all. I'm, I'm, I'm tired. Now, come on. Let's get you back to bed. Stay with me, Sam. Of course I will. Now, come on. Everything will be better tomorrow. You'll see. All done. Well, aren't you a handsome devil? Grace is going to regret it if she goes up against old Tabitha. Isn't that right, Timmy? I said, isn't that right, Timmy? Timmy! <laughs> Tabitha, we're going to win. We're going to win. Poor Grace. Poor Grace. <laughs> 95, 96, 97. Can the racket, you stupid bird. Every morning. Mark my words, Timmy. One of these days we're going to be eating rooster sausage for breakfast. Now, where was I? 98, 99, 100. There. Well, you're no Leonardo DiCaprio, but it'll do for my purposes. <laughs> Now, you have to look very nice for Grace's horrible girls. Timmy won't go to Grace's house. Timmy won't. He won't. Come back here, you little imp. Come back here. I did see 
here, Sam. I saw her. It's the sleeping pill that you give you, sweetheart. I'm dreaming. I'm sleepwalking. Crazy. Oh. I think that you're the most wonderful, mm. beautiful, kindest, sweetest wife a man could ever have. Mm. And I love you so much. I did see her. Shh. Go to sleep. Everything will be clear in the morning. Don't leave me, Sam. I'll be right here all night. And when you wake up in the morning, just go to sleep. That's it. Grace. Yet, little brother, you're running like there's demons chasing you, Louise. And I know their name. It's Crane. You're worried about Teresa's dream, aren't you? The one where Ethan Crane shows up at our doorstep and changes her life. Teresa's dreams are just that. Dreams. They're not gonna come true, Miguel. That one did. Ethan Crane did show up at our house last night. And it's got you spooked, hasn't it? Hi, Teresa. Hey, Kay. So how long before Simone and Whitney are finished? Even with a sore wrist, one more point and Whitney wins. As usual. Whitney has this dream of becoming this top tennis player. And she works hard to make her dream come true. I admire that. Me too. I have a dream I'm working on myself. Catching a certain guy. Well, knowing you, you won't let up on him until he gives in. You got that right. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> you ready, Simone? Yeah. Are you two going? I just have to talk to Whitney about something. Well, don't take too long. Dad is crazy about having everything ready for the carnival to open today. Okay. We'll Let's be there. Okay. All right, have fun. So what do you want to talk to me about? Remember that dream I had about Ethan showing up at my front door and changing my life forever? You mean your fantasy. Guess what? It came true. No way! He was at my house last night. Oh my gosh, what was he doing there? Oh, he just had to talk to my mother about something, but that's not important. He was there, just like in my dream. What'd you say? I didn't talk to him. He drove off and didn't hear me calling for him, but that doesn't matter. He was at my door. It's just a matter of time before he'll come back for me. It's fate, destiny. <sighs> Teresa, your destiny is the Burger Hut. Aren't you supposed to start today? I'm not going. Luis got you that job. If you don't show up, he will be furious. I don't have to take that stupid job at the Burger Hut. Ethan's gonna take me away. We're gonna live happily ever after in the Crane Mansion. <sighs> Isn't that wonderful? No, it's a disaster. It's the worst disaster that could ever happen to you. I don't got time for this nonsense. I never thought I'd see the day you'd believe one of Teresa's dreams. I know. You've been in a foul mood ever since Ethan Crane showed up at the house last night. Just like in Teresa's dream. What are you afraid of? That her and Ethan are gonna get together? How? Where? At the country club? Some fancy party at the Crane Mansion? Oh, right. Like our family gets so many invitations to go hang out with the Cranes. The only reason they even let Mom in the door is because she's their housekeeper. Imagine the look on old man Crane's face if he found out his son was going out with his housekeeper's daughter. Julian? Man, you blow a gasket. But it ain't gonna happen. So lighten up, all right? Your hatred for the Cranes is making you paranoid. They use Mama, take advantage of her. I'm sure they had something to do with Papa disappearing. You don't know that, Louise. I'll tell you what I do know. Trouble happens every time a Crane comes near somebody in our family. Well, Ethan Crane isn't gonna come near our sister. He doesn't even know she exists. 
Are you crazy, Whitney? How can Ethan showing up at my house be a disaster? This is what I've been waiting for. That's just what I mean. You put your whole life on hold waiting for Ethan Crane to come around like some Prince Charming, whisking you off to some glamorous life. Parties at the country club, shopping in Paris. Oh, it'll be fantastic. He doesn't even know that you're alive. He will. You better get over this fantasy, Teresa, or you are going to get hurt big time. You're wrong. I have a feeling something's about to happen, Whitney. Something that's going to change my life forever because of Ethan. I wish I could be there in Paris with you and Sheridan. So do I. But as I said, there's really nothing you can do here. Because she's still unconscious, and I know you have work. As soon as I wrap up this deal I've been working on with your family, I'm going to be on the first plane over. I'd be there now if my father hadn't insisted that the deal was at a critical phase and couldn't be postponed. Well, then you have to finish it. I can't get over how little concern he showed for Sheridan. She's his sister. Well, your father isn't really the emotional type. Nobody in this family shows their emotions. Sometimes I think there's no love at all in this house. I love you. I love you too, Gwen. So, did you manage to get all that paint off of you? Paint? Oh my, did I do that? There's no one else around. I didn't see the ladder behind me. Why don't you watch where you're going? I said I was sorry. No, you didn't. Give me a rag or something. Get it yourself. Hey! <laughs> that. Yes, I got most of the paint out of my hair, but my new loafers were ruined. <laughs> well, I suppose you could ask that girl who spilled the paint on you to pay for them. <laughs> If I never see that girl again, it will be too soon. Hey, you're not going to back out of your promise to me to get to know Harmony better, are you? No. Even though the next time it could kill me. I doubt that. <laughs> I'm sure the majority of people in Harmony are... Uh, Sheridan. Uh, Doctor! Uh, Gwen? What's happening, Gwen? for you, Grace. Just leave me alone. <laughs> what kind of game are you playing with me? It's not a game, Grace. It's very serious. Important things are about to happen here in Harmony. Things are happening elsewhere, too. But all leading up to a very momentous event here in Harmony. Grace, honey, what, what are you doing out here? Did you see the little girl again? No, I just thought maybe... I checked the tree. There was no sign of the swing ever being there. I saw a little girl in the tree right there. Why doesn't anybody believe me? Eve, we're never going to get done in time. You say that every year, TC. Yeah, but next year they can find somebody else to be in charge of the volunteers. Say that every year, too, TC. Ah, there's Simone and Kay. I wonder what they're whispering about. They're probably whispering about the same thing that you and your best friend whispered about when you were in high school. Boys. Hi, Dr. Russell. Coach Russell. Hi, uh, Jessica. Jessica, Jessica, let's see here. We have ladies auxiliary. I'm help. helping my mom at her booth. Sorry. How is your mom? Well, things were kind of strange last night. My dad said not to worry, but I am. Why? What happened? There's your sister. 
she's not my sister. She's an alien sent from Mars to torment me. You know what, you better be nice to her. She's gonna tell Miguel you have the hots for him. If she does, I'll kill her, I swear. You can always tell him before she does. Simone, you're so naive. You never tell a guy you like him until he tells you first. Otherwise, he'll think you're after him. Well, you are after him. Well, I can't let him know that. Oh my God, there's Miguel. He will be mine. And what if Jessica messes everything up and tells Miguel how you feel? Well, I'll just have to make sure Jessica keeps her big mouth shut, now won't I? But how? You have dreams too, Whitney, about playing tennis in the Olympics and at Wimbledon. Yes, I do. But my dream won't come true just because I want it to. I have to work at it very hard. I work hard at my dream. Doing what? Cutting pictures out of fashion magazines. Fantasizing about being some socialite? That's mean, Whitney. I'm sorry, but we're not kids anymore, Teresa. We have both got to start thinking about what we're going to do with our lives. It's time you grew up, faced reality. And that means forgetting about Ethan Crane. Come on, Gwen, call. Ethan, is something wrong? Gwen called from Sheridan's hospital room. We were talking and suddenly she yelled out doctor and dropped the phone, then we were disconnected. I haven't heard back from them and I'm, I'm worried. What if Sheridan... No. Now come on, she's a crane. She's a strong woman. She'll be fine. When can I go back to my room? As soon as the doctor comes back with the test results. Mademoiselle Crane, I am sorry for having to move you so soon after you awoke, but there were tests we had to do immediately. I understand, doctor. Do you have the results? Yes. There are no broken bones, not even a sprain, no internal injuries. <sighs> it's a miracle, really, all things considered. Yes. You do have a very mild concussion, but you should be completely well after a few days bed rest. Thank you, doctor. You must have a guardian angel looking out for you, Miss Crane. I do. One named Diana. Rest now. I will send a nurse to help you back to your room. Thank you. Sheridan, what are you doing? I want to sit up. The doctor said you need to rest, though. Please, quit. Just give me a hand. All right. Oh, oh Ethan's going to be so excited at the good news. A few days bed resting and you'll be out of here. I'm checking out as soon as I get back to my room. What, Sheridan, you heard what the doctor said? Yes, he said I'm fine. Just a mild concussion. No major injuries, no broken bones. I absolutely refuse to let you leave here. Gwen, I'm over 21. If I want to leave, I'll leave. Sheridan! No one can stop me. Gwen, don't even try it. I'm leaving. I thought Ethan was stubborn. <laughs> we Cranes are a hard-headed bunch. <laughs> Hence the mild concussion. Oh. oh, see, you're still in pain. No, nothing a few aspirin can't take care of. Now, please be a darling and go ask the front desk for my release papers. Sheridan, this is crazy. You just regained consciousness. <sighs> Gwen, I'm fine. Just a little sore. Thank God I was wearing my seatbelt. If only Diane had been wearing hers. She died in this hospital, you know. I know. Is that why you're so determined to leave? Because Princess Diana died here? I know you two are very close. I raced over here that night as soon as I heard about the accident. I was too late. <sighs> when I was unconscious, Diana appeared to me. Now, I, I don't know if it was a dream or a vision, but I do know this. She died too soon. Cut off just when she found love, before she could completely experience and enjoy that love. I won't let that happen to me. I'm going to live my life to its fullest. I'm going to love and be loved, and I'm going to enjoy every second of it, starting right now. Hand me the phone. Why? I want to call Jean-Luc. I have to see him. I have to be with him. Sheridan, it... Gwen, I've been looking for someone to love me all my life. Really love me. I finally found that someone in Jean-Luc. I'm going to enjoy every moment of it. 
please. Hand me the phone. Thank you. I'll call Ethan. Tell him I'm awake and I'm in love with a wonderful man and life is just grand. Jean-Luc? It's Sheridan. <laughs> yes, it's really me. Isn't it wonderful, Jean-Luc? Fantastic. It's, it's a miracle. <laughs> yes. Meet me at our cafe. I can't wait to see you. All right. I'll be there as soon as I uh, finish up here. Au revoir. So, where were we? Honey, I checked the tree again. There was no sign of a swing ever being there. Marks, no gouges of any kind on the branches. Nothing. No, I know I saw a little girl on the and swing. You probably did. In your own mind. You still think I imagined it? Honey, you were very tired last night. And on top of that, he gave you a sleeping pill. I mean, that somehow could have affected you. It seems so real. Why is this happening, Sam? You're just overtired. No. Something's wrong. I can feel it. Something terrible is going to happen. I will never let anything happen to you. I can't take this anymore, Sam. I have to know. Know what? About my past. About who I really am. go to Grace's house. Tough toadstools, you're going. Why? You'll see. Because I've got plans for you there. What plans? If Grace thought last night was confusing, just wait and see what old Tabitha has got in store for her and those daughters of hers tonight. Mm -hmm.